Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnes and today I will review the second album by the groove and thrash metal band Machine Head, which is The More Things Change. Personally, not a huge fan of Machine Head. I did check out their debut album Burn My Eyes, which they actually they, they did three years to follow that up though. That's well, it's a long ass time, so um well i wouldn't say they really deliver they i believe they just kind of build off of the success of the debut album and you know instead of that album you got a pretty solid follow-up i would say it's not really amazing by by any means but it's pretty solid nonetheless the album cover is two hands burying uh, or I believe putting a boat in the grave or something. I have no idea what is going on with the album cover. It, it kind of looks like, you know, a mummy. Uh, you know, like rubbing his palms in blood. That's how, that's how it looks to me. So, a pretty gruesome album cover. Uh, I do like the back cover though, where like one of the band members is jumping with his, uh, with his axe. Uh, with some band members behind that. That's a pretty neat back cover, I would say. That's pretty cool, but I'm not a huge fan of the front cover, but you know, do it up what you will. Uh, we have 10 tracks from there, it's 52 minutes long, so there's a pretty concise album, pretty consistent. Uh, we have the opening track, which is the uh, 10 ton hammer, which I was not personally a big fan of, mainly because it was kind of too direct, I would say. This is probably my least favorite kind of machine head kind of song, you know, those direct kind of songs that are right in your face and are kind of unapologetic. Not a huge fan of those tracks, although I was a huge fan of um, of the debut uh, of the debut opening song, The Vidian, which I still would ar argue is the best song and I believe it's also the most popular song, so I'm kind of a basic bitch machine head uh, well, fan. I'm kind of a basic bitch if it comes to Machine Head, I would say, so there you go. Not a huge fan of this opening track, it was kind of straightforward, you know, um, basically how Machine Head is. Pretty typical, pretty straightforward, that's how the song is, pretty much. Kind of a, a walking contradiction, I would say. It's, it's kind of cliche. Uh, then we have Take My Scars, which was a very, very catchy track. Uh, this is actually together with Tenton Hammer, the uh, two, uh, the second single of this record. Uh, Tenton Hammer was the opening single. Uh, and I would personally go with Take My Scarf because Take My Scarf is way catchier, it's way trashier, it's way groove, it's way more groove oriented. It, it kind of has this, you know, relaxing moments too. I do really enjoy it about the track. And this track was overall a very great opening uh, or a second track. I did wish that it was the opening track because it's just way better in every sense and it would, you know, leave a better taste in my mouth or, you know, uh, have a better opening, I would say, you know, because the opening or rather the closing track uh, determines, you know, uh, the taste in my mouth, which kind of sounds weird, but you know what I mean. Uh, then we have Struck a Nerve, which sounds very similar now that I look at it to War Nerve by Pantera, so, you know, the influence is only built up from here, and I believe the album where Warner was on, The Great Southern Tranquil, came out a year before this, so it really doesn't help, doesn't it? Fuck's sake. Uh, this, uh, this song overall was kind of generic, I would say. It was kind of, you know, typical, three and a half minutes long. It kind of sounds like Machine Head wants to be kind of like a radio kind of band, I would say. Or, or a radio band, a uh, fucking... Uh, it, it sounds like, yeah, it, it sounds like, you know, the band wants to, you know, do something like Corn did or something. And they definitely embrace that vibe on their next album, which, you know, is new metal, I believe. So fuck, fuck those albums. Um, uh, yeah, but Struck a Nerve is pretty typical. Kind of goes back to Tentel Hammer again, not a huge fan of that sound. And then we get to Down to None. Uh, Down to None. Uh, yeah, the song was kind of dark, I would say, pretty bleak sounding. Um, yeah, overall, the song is a big improvement. It kind of sounds like Death Church again from uh, from the debut album. Huge fan of that song. I did really enjoy that one. 
This kind of sounds like a copy and paste kind of song. Not a huge fan of that, but I do like that the band wants to bring, you know, kind of a darker vibe back, back which I enjoyed. So yeah, definitely a plus in my book, probably one of my favorites of the album, so there you go. Uh, then we get The Front Lines, which was a, uh, yeah, I would say this is kind of like a Manowar-ish kind of tribute, I would say. It's kind of, you know, typical, it's kind of... Uh, uh, heavy on on the war topics, I would say the front lines, you know, storming off, dying for your land, dying for your country. It, it it's kind of typical. It's the centerpiece of the record. Uh, it's five minutes. It's five minutes, almost six minutes long. So yeah, overall this song was pretty typical of the band. But I do like the homage. Though I do you know if that is the intention, then it is a pretty neat homage. Otherwise, you know, uh, take it or leave it. Then we get Spine, which is um, a very groove oriented song. This song was very heavy and I wasn't really sure if I really liked it because uh, the track overall just kind of screams bland to me. But it was a pretty enjoyable track though. There were a lot of trashy riffs on this album, on this track rather, and a lot of you know groove or, or uh, orientation. So, Overall, this was, this was a good track. If we do have one flaw with it, I, I think it's a little bit too long. It kind of goes on for a bit too long, but outside of that, I really dug it. Then we get Bay of Pigs, which is, um, uh, yeah, kind of like a kick ass kind of, you know, zombie slaying, you know, a slaughter kind of um, kick ass soundtrack tune or something. I, I did really enjoy this one because it is kind of like, you know, typical again. But. This song kicks a lot of ass. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think this song is very, very exceptional. It's um, you know again straightforward. You know that's the that's just the thing with this album. It's pretty straightforward. But I do think that Bay of Pigs is a pretty kicking tune, very enjoyable, and just a very kick-ass track. Uh, then we get Violate, which is uh, seven minutes long, which um, might turn some people off. But yeah, yeah, I thought personally that the opening was kind of bland, I would say, and that later on it got really like trashy, like really classic trash metal, you know, like Exodus or Testament or something, something like that. Uh, it did really get classic on here. A lot of classic riffs. You can definitely hear some like trash influences, although they are trash, but you know, uh, I mean like classic trash, you know, 80s, 80s trash metal. It definitely sounds like a track like that later down the road and it kind of ends with one of those really horrible screeches, you know, that she has on Burma eyes, which uh, would block. Really, really bad ending again, but what do you expect from uh, Machina? They always have bad endings like that. So this track is really mixed for me. The opening was pretty good, I would say. The middle part is awesome though. The middle part might be one of my favorites of the whole album. And the ending was also kind of iffy for me. So this track could have been cut down for like three minutes and it would have been a fine track. But now you have kind of like a cluster kind of song, which has good parts, but also bad parts. So this is probably my most mixed kind of song. It is good in places, but it's pretty bad on others. So I'm kind of mixed on it. Then we get Blistering, which is a very... Like, yeah, this is, again, the wife beater song. This song is very direct, in your face. It really wants to beat the shit out of you. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm kind of tired of the sound, honestly. You know, I didn't really expect anything else from Machine Head when I first uh, listened to Burn My Eyes. But it does kind of get tiring at me right now because I just didn't really... I don't really enjoy that sound from Machine Head, you know, because it just sounds really bland to me. Uh, but Blistering is, you know, kind of an exception for me because it is a good song. But again, just like Violate, it is good, but it is kind of too typical, I would say. It is too bland for me to actually like love it or something. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm kind of iffy on it again. Not a terrible track, not a great track, it's just kind of there. Uh, and then we have Blood of the Zodiac and yeah... I, I personally think that the last three tracks of this album are really hit or miss for me. Um, yeah, they're just kind of like there, I would say. They're just kind of, you know, meh. Uh, yeah, I didn't really care for it personally. But if you like it, then, you know, I can understand that. 
Um, yeah, so Blood of the Zodiac. Uh, you know, it is good. It is kind of too long in my opinion, six and a half minutes. It didn't have that bad of an outro, you know, as uh, Burma I said, but that, you know, it still had kind of like a lot to be desired kind of outro, I would say. Uh, but it is a step in the right direction, so I do uh, approve of that. Um, yeah, so Blood of the Zodiac, it's good. It's probably the best out of these last tracks, probably the most consistent one. But I was still kind of iffy on it personally, so, you know, it's an okay outro, but it could have been better. So personally, I've been thinking about it, and I think that Tenton Hammer, although it is a bit typical, I do still think it's very catchy, but it's probably my least favorite of the songs that are favor of this record, if, if that makes sense to you. So it's probably my fourth favorite. You know, I was kind of thinking about it, and I was like, oh, well, you know, it's kind of catchy. It is the opening track. It did, it did, um, you know, grab my, it did grab my attention from the very first go. So, yeah, I, I kind of have a 180 opinion right now on Tenth Number. I do think it's pretty good. Uh, although, you know, it is my least favorite of the, of my favorite tracks of this record. Sounds weird, but uh, it makes sense if you uh, read the description. So, um, overall, I did enjoy the first couple of tracks. I would say the first five tracks are pretty good. So, I would say half of the album is pretty good. Spine was good, but a bit too long. Bay of Pigs was awesome in my opinion. Violate was good, really great in some places, but really like stretchy and bad in other places. Blistering was kind of, you know, white beater material. And Blood of the Zodiac is good, but again, like Violate, it could have been way shortened. And, you know, it wasn't as bad as Block from Burma Eyes, but it was still kind of, it's still, um, less a lot to be desired so i would say the first half of the album is pretty good uh the latter part of the album is not bad but it can definitely be better that's what i think uh with the exception of bay of pigs and uh well yeah well violet was pretty good but you know violet and blood of the zodiac were good tracks but they could have been shortened down and they could have less filler in them that's what i think so overall i'm feeling a 7.8 on this album um yeah i did wish that it was you know that it was better but i believe you know the next album that i'm gonna review is their magnum opus i suppose uh, the blackening which a lot of people cite as you know the best machine at album and you know a great album and you know, god it got them into machina so um yeah, I have a lot of anticipation for that album because a lot of people are saying it's the greatest album by them. So, um, yeah, I have high hopes for the record, or you know, what is the uh, word here? Um, um, I am anticipated to listen to that album because a lot of people are citing it to be the greatest work in uh, of mankind, you know, in metal of recent memory. So. Let's see if that's true. Let's see if you know, uh, you know, if the if the theories are true, if you know, the rumors are true. I don't know. Personally, not a huge fan of Machina, but I did enjoy Burma Eyes. That was a good album, in my opinion. It could have been better, but you know, it was a pretty good debut album. This album is slightly weaker, I would say, but it was still pretty good. So. Yeah, I like two machine at home so far. I did like the two ones that I reviewed so far. So the blackening, you know, it might make me a fan, but I will probably never be a fan of machine at because I, I just think that Rob Flynn is a fucking douchebag. But, but you know, same thing with Pantera. I love Pantera, but Phil and Selma is a fucking asshole. But I can't. But I kind of like Phil and Selma because he is kind of like you know. They, they put my they put my fucking comments in the goddamn magazine. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm all about, but you know, a full documentary. Um, check that out if you haven't. Yeah, you, you know, I have problems with Pantera, but I do think you know they did create a subgenre in metal, and they are you know overall pretty great band, so I cannot really deny them. Whereas Machine Head, you know, they you know they are kind of like you know. A Sepultura, Pantera kind of rip off, and then you know Lamb of God came uh, came around, and you know they kind of ripped off that sound. So, 
But I do probably prefer Lamb of God because they are, you know, a more consistent band. They don't really have a stinker in their discography like, you know, Machine Head with their setup new metal shit and their, you know, their recent god awful Catharsis album. So fuck those albums. Uh, yeah, so definitely check out this album if you are a groove metal fan or a trash metal fan. Definitely check them out uh, if you are a fan of those uh, subgenres. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of groove metal, but I do love Pantera. Uh, I like Lamb of God, and I do love me some Sepultura, but you know, early, early Sepultura, and yeah, you know, if you have a big four groove metal, then I would put Pantera, of course, at the top spot. Uh, Lamb of God second, because they are basically, you know, uh, Pantera part two. Then Sepultura because they have some grey or, or or would I put Machine Head? Yeah, I would probably put Machine Head above there, probably third because Machine Head, you know, was from day one a groove metal band where Sepultura only was groove metal for KLCD slash Roots, but Roots is a fucking god awful album, so there, there you go. So uh, there you go, that's my opinion on this album, let me know what you think about Machine Head, uh, the more things change. Or Machine Head in general, what, what do you think of groove metal, do, do you like the band that I mentioned? Let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.